Hey everyone, so it's been a big week. I had my lymph node mapping on Monday and then yesterday I had my surgery. So I'm gonna break those up into two um, different videos so it's not a l real long one. I wanna make a separate video just of the um, lymph node mapping. There's a more official term but I can't pronounce it so we'll just call it that, the mapping. Uh, just because before I had it done, I tried and I couldn't find a whole lot of resources on what the experience is like. I could find videos, you know, like from hospitals of what the procedure is, but I just didn't know what to expect going in. I didn't know, um, you know, can I drive after it? Can I eat? Can I work? Will I feel weird? You know, I couldn't find anything like that, so I wanted to make its own separate video so that if anyone out there has to get the mapping done, you know what to expect through the whole thing. Um, so I did, I showed up planned, like I dressed for work, hoping to go to work afterwards, but I told my boss, you know, um, they say it's gonna take about two hours, so I probably won't be in until lunch, but I'll let you know if I end up not being able to come in later. Um, and so the MD Anderson app, it did say it took about two hours, which their app is great. That includes wait time. So like I mentioned in my last video, when I had my anesthesia appointment, it said it was gonna take an hour and the appointment itself only took about like five minutes and the rest time was wait time and it took about an hour total. So if you go to MD Anderson, in my experience, the time that it puts includes wait time and your actual appointment. So it took about two hours. Um, they called me the day before to um, confirm my arrival time. They told me, um, I believe that it was, I couldn't eat or drink anything after midnight. I could, well, I could have clear fluids only after midnight. And um, so they told me that if you go to MD Anderson, just a little tip that I figured out, it's kind of confusing in that building for some reason. You go up to elevator T and if you look on the map, there's T, U, R, and S, but when you get there, there's only R and S. You gotta go up the escalators and then there's T. So if you ever have to go to the Mays Clinic at MD Anderson and you need, or if you just ever need elevator T, go up the escalator. That's where it's at. I don't know why they don't have arrows pointing. Um, I just had to find it. Anyway, so I got there, I got checked in, um, you know, got my little wristband and then went to the waiting room. A tip, if you're planning on watching some movies, like I brought my iPad, if you're planning on doing that while you wait, download your movies ahead of time. So Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, they all I think have the ability to download movies ahead of time. So it'll help just because you're not using public Wi-Fi trying to stream it and then it gets laggy. It also helps your battery life because it's not streaming. You can even put it on airplane mode. So it'll just last a little longer. So that's my tip to you. That's what I did. Worked out great. So I waited. I didn't feel like very long, but maybe like 40 minutes. Then they called me back in. The nurse walked me to the room. Um, I had to strip down everything. I got to keep on my underwear, but bra, clothes, everything gone. Just a tip. Um, make sure you will wear full coverage underwear because, you know, you're going to be walking around half naked most of the day. Uh, since I did come in my work clothes, I don't have any work shoes that I could wear socks with that cover my whole feet, like only the kind that go from like the till to your toe to your heel. So I just packed an extra pair of socks. I'm so glad I did, um, just because it kept my toes warm because you do take off your shoes. They gave me two robes. I put one on the normal way, open in the back, and then a second one on, open in the front, or two gowns, so it made a robe. Um, then she came in, confirmed a lot of questions for me. Again, it reminded me that I was at a cancer hospital because the questions were like have you had chemo in the past week have you had any radiation treatment in the past week um you know have you had a blood transfusion just a lot of stuff that really they don't ask well maybe the blood transfusion but you know they don't usually ask you unless you're at a cancer hospital so that sucked but it, i mean it is what it is you know it's just like it's just kind of those reminders that you're like this is real like i actually have cancer um kind of like i forget and then it hits me again like i joke about it but I forget that like it's real. Sorry, I'm thirsty. My meds are making me thirsty. Um, anyways, so then she explained it to me. She said, uh, you're gonna get like four shots and they're gonna hurt. She said it felt, was gonna kind of feel like bee stings, like back to back, like four bee stings at a time. So what they did is she took a little, a little tube of lidocaine, put it all around right on top of where they removed my melanoma. Then she put kind of like it was like a band-aid but it looked like saran wrap just put that on squished it 
and then she was like, okay, we're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes, let it um, soak in so that it'll go deeper so you don't fill it as much, the longer the better. And so, um, you know, she sat me down in the chair, the chair reclines, your legs, you know, can be kicked up and plus MD Anderson, every time they give you a blanket, it's warm. And so, you know, I got my little blanket, I was all toasty. And then she, you know, they had a TV, but I didn't want to watch just like cable. So I was like, hey, can I just, I'll watch my iPad. And so I got that out. Um, I'm really glad I brought that. She was like, do you want me to turn off the lights? Which I think is really sweet. You know, they're always offering because I'm sure a lot of people are like light sensitive because of their treatment. But I was like, hey, like I'm going to fall asleep. So we'll just keep them on. Um, so then I just chilled back there in that room for about 30 minutes, just letting the um, lidocaine seep, seep in, try to get it numb. Then another nurse came in. I went to the bathroom real quick just in case because I didn't know how long it would be. Um, but I, I really don't think you need to. I guess it doesn't hurt. Um, but anyway, so then I went into another room and it looked just like your, what you see on TV of when people get scanned. You know, there's like the long bed hooked up to like a tube thing. So I got in. Um, she put a little like foam roller under my knees. She showed me, like she explained everything to me again and she showed me like the screen of what I'll be seeing and then she asked me you know do you have any questions and I was like yeah you know like since I'm just gonna like be laying here for 30 minutes once we get started do you mind if I like pop in headphones and listen to an audiobook and she was like no totally go for it so if you have an audible subscription or something I mean I think you get a free trial so I would recommend just downloading a book just so you can have something to do or I guess maybe a podcast or something just something to take your mind off it because you are laying there for a while um and luckily, so I had AirPods and um, so I could like put those in and I didn't have to have any wires anywhere. Then I have an Apple Watch so I could control the volume and like play pause if I needed to. So I could put my phone back so there was nothing in their way. I was trying to stay out of their way, not be an inconvenience. Um, then she gave me the four shots. The shots themselves didn't hurt because they don't go very deep. The injection is what hurt like as she was pushing in it's like radioactive material. As she was pushing that in, you can feel it. And I got the HPV shot in my arm when I was in high school and it felt very similar. It's like you can just feel it going in. Um, I don't think it goes into your blood. Um, I mean, it might, but for sure it like goes into your lymph node system and shows up on the screen. So um, she did the injections, then she tucked me in more warm blankets and she tucked me in. I thought that was so like comforting. And then I slid under, there was, um, you know, I just got an x-ray done, so it looked just like that, those big, like, metal sheets that's got a little plus on it. She slid that right over my thigh. Um, the first, and she, it was so nice, she moved the monitor to where, like, while I'm laying down, I could look at it. So the first two pictures took two minutes each, so I could see the timer and know, like, okay, this is how long I have. And then I could see, actually, the dye showing up on the picture. So it was really hard to describe. It was kind of hard to tell. Um, it was a black screen with a bunch of white dots, almost like static or looking through a telescope at a distant, like, you know, stars, just like there was a whole bunch of white dots. And then there was a cluster of just like a solid white. That was the injection site. So that's where, you know, those four shots were. That was where it's at. That was my, like right around my melanoma. Um, and then right next to it was a really small cluster of white. So they did warn me, the lymph nodes are supposed to light up. Whether you have cancer in your lymph node or not, the whole purpose of this is to light up that lymph node. Or lymph nodes, sometimes people have like two right there. Uh, so if you go through this, it lighting up, it's supposed to happen. It'll happen to everyone. So don't freak out if you see it lit up. That does not mean there's cancer there. I mean, it could be, but it's guaranteed it's gonna light up. That's just for them to know the whole purpose of this is for your doctor to know where's your lymph node. They take all these pictures so your doctor can easily and quickly find it, find the right one, and remove the right one. So they did the first scan. It took exactly two minutes. Then they did another scan. It took exactly two minutes. Then they did a 3D scan. So the, um, the plate that was on top of me is actually part of you, and it just slowly rotated. So that took about 24 minutes. And then, um, oh, and I had to have my arms above my head for that, I guess, just to keep it out of the way since that was moving, um, you know, so they can just get just my legs in. Then after that, I did a CT and that took maybe one or two minutes. So the first scan, two minutes, second scan, two minutes, 
third scan 24 minutes last scan maybe a minute or two so all around it was basically 30 minutes I mean it was really quick in between pictures she just came in adjusted a few settings and then we went again so maybe like 35 minutes for the whole thing plus 30 minutes for you know letting the lidocaine set in so it really was about a solid hour but you're only actually like laying still for 30 minutes then after that um, I just went back I changed back into my clothes and then I could leave I didn't have to check out or anything and that was it so I felt totally fine my leg wasn't sore because like I said they don't do the shot real deep it wasn't it didn't feel like you know when you get a shot your leg hurts um, I didn't feel weird I didn't feel like lightheaded or dizzy um, I just went back to work felt totally fine I uh, like you know you can drive and I you know right when I got there I like 30 minutes later we had lunch so I was able to eat lunch um, and everything was fine. So if you're um, having to do a lymph node map, don't worry about it. It's very Not a big deal. Um, I was the most scared about it just because like I said I couldn't find anything to know, you know what to expect before and after and I didn't know many people who had actually had that done a lot of them just had the Removal so that was I was just more curious and then I don't like the unknown um, but it really wasn't that bad, you know, like I said it was pretty quick and it just reminded me of how fortunate I am to live in Houston because, you know, I was able to go back to work the rest of the day, you know, so I only had to use a half a day of sick time and I was able to work, I think, until like seven o'clock uh, that night so that I could, you know, get caught up because I'd been gone in Austin, get some things done to prepare for being gone yesterday and today. Um, and so I'm really fortunate about that because I know most people who go to MD Anderson are from out of town, a lot are out of state, a few out of the country. And so for them to come down, like they have to take off several days of work and miss out and get behind. And, you know, with my job, I just, that would be so stressful. So I'm very glad that, um, I live close to Houston. I mean, I live like maybe 10 minutes away from MD Anderson. I work like 20 minutes away. So if anything were to come up, you know, I can quickly get there. It wasn't a big deal. Um, so, and it was really comforting to know, like to sleep in my own bed the night before my surgery and then come home from surgery to my own bed. Um, that was just really nice. Uh, and so I guess that'll be the next video. I'll do two videos back to back just cause like I said, I wanted to make these separate so they're not too long. And so that, um, if anyone, if you don't need the lymph node biopsy or the lymph node mapping video, you can just, I guess, skip this one, but we'll do the surgery next.